Soft Magic Lab on the SOC Radio Network, broadcasting live from our studios in New Zealand, Los Angeles, and New York City. I'm Marie Vargas, also known as the Hollywood Witch, the Pop Psychic, and the Magic Housewife. But tonight, I'm your naughty professor, a magical mad scientist of sorts, and, with the help of my trusty lab assistant, pop culture skeptic and guru, Tony Sokol, we're going to be stirring up a nice, hot, boiling cauldron of magic, mystery, and mischief. So, let us show you how to take a whole new look at love, romance, showbiz, fashion, world news, and the secrets of the cosmos through the all-seeing third eye of the future. We're ready to lead you through magical and mystical experiments using ancient knowledge in a modern text. With guest mystics, healers, shamans, and all kinds of fabulous magical people. And you are going to get a chance to get your future read right here. Good evening, and thank you for ignoring Mercury Retrograde with us here on Magic Lab Academy, where we talk about magic like it's an everyday thing, which for us it is. We're here at SOC Radio, brought to you by Spiritualist Online Network, uh, which brings online radio shows in all aspects of spirituality, development, knowledge, and education. On the other hand, I'm the infidel, Tony Sokol. Uh, I am here with my co-host, the Hollywood witch, Murphy Vargas, and tonight is a special night. Uh, it is Elvis's death day, and we have someone from Nashville who's going to, doesn't know about this until just now, going to talk to us about whether she sees Elvis at the Vampire Clubs. But first, Marie has a question for Tracy, our producer. Hello everyone, it's Marie Vargas, celebrity psychic, Hollywood witch. Some call me the B word, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, typically on our show, since I've been consulting for the Horsefly Chronicles, we've always had some sort of technical difficulty. And today, I spoke with somebody at the Seneca Nation, the museum in fact, in Salamanca, New York, and she suggested that I burn some... Um, tobacco to the spirits and lo and behold they seem to be appeased our producer Tracy is a medium and I want to know Tracy are the Indians happy with me is that why everything's okay yes they are and I'm actually seeing six around you does that help cool. six Indians yes oh my god really how cool yep. okay yep. Well, well, then I hope that Phil is listening to this episode. Phil, you got to burn some tobacco in the portal. They just like it. They're cool when you do. Mm-hmm. Moving right along, let's talk with our real vampire guests. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? Hi. We have Lady Gia Bathory and Tim Bay. Gia Bathory is a burlesque performer um, who's starting an off-grid uh, society. Uh, for spiritually for spiritually minded people, and Tim Bay runs the Real Vampire News. Um, I wanted to open with an ambush question for Gina, for Gia though. You're from Nashville. Today is Elvis's death day. Does he show up at the vampire clubs? Well, uh, to be completely honest with you, um, I actually am the queen of the Memphis Vampire Court, which uh, I. My temple is uh, is is surprisingly about two miles from Graceland. Ooh, uh, even better. Yes, um, I I often am a fan of running over there and knocking on the doors and running away. Uh, <laughs> that's my first uh, As far as your question goes, uh, no, I have never seen Elvis at any of our events. Um, we have seen some people that look like Elvis, and we've certainly some, seen some people with drug habits like Elvis. But never Elvis himself, unfortunately. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Do you ever get cravings for peanut butter, je- jelly, and bacon sandwiches? Ugh, if I do, <laughs> if I ever do, I, I think I should probably see a dietitian because that does not sound healthy at all. Well, it was one of his favorite foods, and I was wondering if he was prone to possessing people versus actually making 
appearances. So that would have been an indication of an Elvis possession, definitely. Well, um, that, that I, my, shooting a TV. my ex-husband is actually uh, was one of the chefs at the arcade in Memphis, oh. which was Elvis's oh. favorite restaurant. And one of the one of the menu items that they have is is uh, his peanut butter and banana sandwich thing, uh, as well as Ooh. his Elvis's fried chicken. <laughs> uh, right does, he haunt, does he haunt the place? Uh, a lot of things haunt that place. I'm pretty sure he's one of them. Now we're on to something, Marie. There's a haunting in, yeah. in Memphis. Uh, uh, so but we, we're, we're, we're haunting in eastern Pennsylvania. <laughs> we're haunting in eastern Pennsylvania at the Horsefly House. So, mm -mm, we're not going to Memphis. Not this year. But maybe next year. It's very hot right now. And I want to ask, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, one thing that we were talking about before the show that I think our listeners want to know is, tell us about the different vampire tribes and how they are unique. Um, well, there are, there are many, and, and we are just as diverse as, as what we call mundanes, uh, normal people. Uh, though I hesitate to use the word normal, uh, but we are we are just as diverse. Um, as far as the clans that currently exist, uh, there are there are far fewer than there used to be. Um, I personally am a Toreador. Uh, we are the artists of the vampire community. We are the entertainers. We are uh, the people that Miss Vargas probably encounters on a regular basis out in LA. Uh, we, we are also the painters, the sculptors, the performers, the singers and entertainers, as well as the sex workers and the more sexually, in general, sexually inclined vampires that you will meet. Uh, there are Malkavians, which are our, uh, our, our rather insane but loved uh, clans. Um, there is, of course, the Blessed Temple House Sahaja, run by Goddess Rosemary. Um, but we, we are just as diverse. Uh, we all have our own little idiosyncrasies and physical traits, uh, personality traits. We're just like any other race. We have all of our own little different subsects and personalities and likes and dislikes, just like everyone else. Oh, Can you tell us a little bit okay. about where these where these came from. Uh, was, did this come from the LARP community, or does it go back before that? Does it go back to ancient times? Where, where are the where are the Toreadors? How far back do they go as Toreadors in the vampire world? Well, a lot of the information we don't uh, we don't discuss publicly as far as our history mm -hmm. goes. A lot of it is very secretive. But uh, as far as what I can tell you, um, a lot of the names that we choose to use. Think of it a lot like a stage name. Um, your name may be Mike Smith, but you go by the name Jonathan Allen. Yeah, you know, whatever it is, uh, publicly. Toreador is the word that we use for a much more ancient clan, a much more ancient kind of vampire. Uh, according to the legends, uh, we were one of the first clans that were birthed from the union of Lilith and her mate. Uh, we were the beauty of Lilith's blood that was born. Um, now, that is just according to legend. Uh, we don't know. There's really no way to tell if that's true or not. But mm -hmm. that is what most of us are raised <laughs> with those those ancient legends. But Toreadors are a very, very old sect of vampire. But Toreador, again, is a name that we use as a way for people to better associate what they're dealing with, with something that's more modern and much more mainstream accessible. Okay. I, would, I was suspecting that you guys came from Spain because of the Toyador name. Is <laughs> that? It's actually no relation to, to the Matador Toreadors. Uh, it's just the same word. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with Spain. Uh, um, most Toreadors that you'll find are Eastern European for the most part. Okay. Oh. Uh, now you said that you're ancient, uh, that you have ancient lineage. Uh, were there uh, are there rituals and things of that nature that were passed down? What sort of spirituality do you practice, if any? Um, and is it varied as well, or is there any specific binding thing in yours? 
Well, it, it does vary. Um, that's a very good question because oftentimes the spirituality of vampirism gets very muddled in people's personal beliefs or practices or, or you know, misconceptions. Uh, we all do have our own unique forms of spirituality and our own personal flavors, but the vast majority of us are pagan. Um, and again, majority, not all. Um, the, the majority of us that are pagan do tend to be goddess worshipers, um, though there are many, many worshipers of, of hundreds of various gods. But uh, I would say probably the most prevalent as far as organized spirituality go would be uh, the sacred teachings of goddess Rosemary with Temple House Sahaja. Oh. Interesting. Um, I was talking with Rosemary about this a couple of days ago because of her new collection, The Ankh. And we were discussing how the Ankh symbolism goes back to Sekhmet and the vampiric gods of the Egyptians. Because Correct. the Ankh is the symbol of eternal life and Sekhmet needed to be placated with beer that looked like blood when she was on the verge of destroying the world. This is correct. Um, that, that is a very, very common uh, belief system among us. Um, you, you also have, if you go back further, uh, you have the blood, the blood serpent, Tiamat, the goddess of chaos and destruction, who I am personally uh, a high priestess of. That is who we worship at the Temple of Great Mother. Um, oh, and then that's best. why that's why we vibe. Then you're you're reptilian. Love that. I, that's your reptilian. So we were going to get to this later, but I, I'm dying to ask the question now. Ask me whatever you like. Have you performed Jack Parsons' Babylon ritual? Ninety three is going to be my answer. Okay. <laughs> I knew there was a reason why I liked you. <laughs> Um, do you write a beast with many heads? I write a lot of things and some of them <laughs> have heads. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that sounded so, awful. <laughs> no, it, sound, it sounded cute and girly. I like you. You're Thank so you. glam. I wish that our, our listeners could see you. You're just so gorgeous. Love it. Love it. Tim, you so you've been so quiet. Can I draw you out of your bat cave? Well, absolutely. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know if I'd call it a bat cave, but uh, as long as you don't want me to transform into something. No, oh. no, not yes, this time. We're not doing. Us. No, we're not doing video, Tony. Don't pressure him. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, you run the Real Vampire News. Um, tell us what's new. Well. The newest things on the horizon are, as they are quite often in the real vampire world, um, things that have come around a full circle, um, things that uh, have originated out some time before, um, but are finding a, a new breath of life. The one example that I would say is different, however, uh, there is a... A uh, project going on at the moment called the Unity Project. And it is something that the real vampire culture has been looking for for a long time. There's a lot of controversy, but it's something that's needed. Okay, so tell us who's, who's spearheading this and how, what are you doing to uh, bring these vampires together? Um, well, um, I am as a... I suppose you put it this way, a reporter or magazine editor. Uh, I'm simply watching and getting... Someone's hissing, hold on. ...together. Um, uh, we're, getting, we're getting some sort of feedback from somewhere. Are we? Could it be me? Okay. Could it be me? I'm just possibly. It sounds like spirits, anyway. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, as I was saying, our uh, um, a very renowned figure in, in the culture, uh, Maven Law, is uh, uh, probably the most visible and uh, uh, spearheading uh, uh, person of the uh, Unity Project. Now, 
Uh, there is a lot of backing from other areas. So, uh, um, of course, Texas uh, is a particularly uh, active uh, modern vampire uh, area, and uh, there's a lot of support down there, and it is gaining a foothold in a great number of states. Okay. <clears throat> choke, them up to the, to the, choke them up on the choke board. We have more vampire states. That's good. There weren't many when we when this started. I know that. Um, I just I only knew of pretty much New York, Los Angeles, and and for some reason Washington D.C. in the early days had a had, had a pretty cool yeah. vampire. Um, I understand that Atlanta did too, but they also have a city underneath the city. So, um, oh, here's what, here's a question. Um, how how young can a person be? when they realize that they're a vampire, is this something that happens as you get older or can you be like a little kid thinking, ah, oh, I'm different somehow? How, well, who are your youngest vampires? Okay, the, the, the common uh, accepted theory at the moment is that uh, the recognition of the traits, the abilities and, and the feelings within a person come at somewhere around uh, puberty, which mm. is a particularly active and, and powerful time in a young person's life. The uh, one of the schools of thought says that people are born vampiric, but they don't come to realise it. Now, the the people that follow that school of thought also uh, believe that it can come at any time. For example, myself. Uh, <coughs> I came to realize that I had that as part of me at the age of 16. Um, my wife, on the other hand, um, realized that it was occurring within her from the age of uh, around four. So huh. it, it, there's a big argument uh, or discussion, debate, if you like, about when it actually hits the yeah. common theory is at around puberty okay, okay. well using you as a uh, before i get to deal with this using you as if you if it, if it came to you at 16 what did you did you have any, any inklings that might have led to it prior to that when you were when you were eight did you did you get did you maybe think that there was something in you that might have turned that might be turning later was there any inkling that it was if she knew it for maybe you knew it eight but you didn't know yes. until you were 16. Well, it's it's funny you should mention that because um, I always had this strangest feeling that I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And when I was eight years old one day, I was playing out in the yard as a young English boy is, is wont to do. And I suddenly stopped everything and the realization hit me like a thunderbolt. You are in the wrong place at the wrong time. So something, there was something there from much earlier than 16. But it wasn't until I was 16 that I actually came into contact with uh, a young lady who was, um, I, I probably would describe her as a blood fetishist. Um, and uh, she uh, literally gave me my first uh, sanguinary blood experience, um, and it was no stopping from there. So yes, okay. earlier. Yeah, Simu, so you're not the only reader. Um, uh, Geo, how old were you when you first realized, and what was the indications that came even before that? What what what? What brought it out in you? Uh, that's that's a very complex uh, answer. Yeah, um, I I would say that it, it probably started. Um, I come from a family that has practiced a lot of uh, different forms of the occult, so I was a little more in tune with it uh, than I probably should have been. But uh, I started probably around twelve or thirteen really sort of changing. Um, I had a near-death experience, and after that, 
a, a lot of things started changing in me. And then um, when I got older, I returned back to New Orleans at 18, uh, where I met Maven. And um, it solidified much more and crystallized once I entered the city. Uh, that city itself has a, a very vampiric energy to it, which is why it's one of our meccas. Um, mm -hmm. I think that it's very difficult for me to describe myself as strictly a vampire. Um, I, I consider myself a reptile in, in human skin. And I have a... So Serpent Tessa, you're not kidding. I have an interesting question for you as far as magic is concerned. Yes. When you are practicing magic, okay, the the main star that we associate with the dark, of course, is Algol, okay, the Eye of Medusa. Mm -hmm. Although that has been that has been um, claimed to be vampiric. What about the Dragon Nebula and Papa Draconis? How do these? How does how does this figure into your magical workings? Um. Well, we, the same thing that you're describing, we call the Eye of Great Mother, uh, the serpent's eye inside of a pyramid. Uh, we yes. call that the Eye of Great Mother, and we use that as our main symbol. If you look at just about anything associated with the Temple of Great Mother, you will see that eye. Um, many of the people in my life have it branded or tattooed on them. Um, it figures in mainly because Great Mother is always looking. The serpent of chaos is always coiling inside of herself and always shedding scales. And from those scales and those drops of blood, thus we come. So um, Draco is very important to us, but more so Calcirio is, is the one that we use the most in the worship of Tiamat. Okay. And do you, do you, do you say that she is a, what is, is Tiamat is chaos. She's not descended from Typhon, is she? Different. She's not descended of anything. She is the first. Oh, okay. She's the beginning of all things. Typhon came much, much, much later. Tiamat okay. originally was the, if you read the Enuma Elish, the uh, Sumerians, the Sumerian tablets of creation, um, mm -hmm. she's the first goddess that you will ever hear anything about in human history. Is, is the goddess Tiamat. Um, she is the serpent of chaos, but she in turn is also dualistic and is the goddess of order. She is the goddess of destruction as well as creation, life, death. It's all about balance. What is her correlation to the Titans? Um, the Titans are a Greek uh, Hellenistic uh, belief system. Um, the Titans had, the Titans were more natural elemental spirits uh that mm -hmm. that were that were these raging uh, ways of uh, that people used to describe the forces of nature and elements that they didn't understand hurricanes volcanoes things like that i mean we didn't even have the word for a volcanic eruption until Pliny and the eruption of vesuvius we didn't even have a word for volcano um so that's what the titans represented to hellenistic culture Tiamat is thousands of years before that. She is the earliest recorded goddess that you will ever find. If you, again, go back through the Enuma Elish, um, she is called Mumu, the, the original creator, the Er begetter, mother of all. She is the mother of the gods themselves. Okay. Hmm. Uh, uh, Tracy wanted me to ask you a question. When you, you're reptilian, uh, when... What happens to your eyes when you get when you get all reptilian? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see my eyes on a regular basis, uh, but it is tough uh, to see back into them. What have people told you? It is, um, uh, you know, watch your language. And, oh, I can't because I can't see my mouth. Um, <laughs> what happens to my eyes? My eyes tend to change more during moments of spirituality, during rituals, things like that. Uh, less when I'm angry, uh, more during sexual activity and during ritual activity, they tend to shift a little bit. Okay, how do they shift? Do they change color or do they change? Uh, yeah, tell me a little bit, of what, what, what have people said? Um, it, it depends, different people see different things. Um, 
most commonly uh, people see a, a black pupil, a black pupil with a shining center. That's what most people end up seeing. Uh, if you are in ritual activity with me, you will see a bright green with a serpentine pupil. That is the most common thing that people will see. Yeah, the black pupil indicates that you're a descendant of Lilith. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh -huh. And then we go to Toreador and Lilith. It's always about Lilith. <laughs> Lilith, Lilith. Lilith. Do people get caught in this black uh, and w when it goes back? Can do you guys? Get caught in do that? you guys? Do you guys acknowledge Samael as her consort? Some in your do. okay. Hmm. So, uh, Tim, Tim, we yeah. haven't forgotten you. I'm sorry about that. Now we've got. No, I'm I'm roll, I'm roll, I'm it's your turn. It's your turn. Let's let's talk about your spirituality. What what do you practice? Um, and yeah, let's just start there, and then you can tell us a little bit about, about what you practice as uh, in Sahaja. Okay, okay. Um, my personal spirituality is very much tied to my family lineage. My family has been documented going back as far as the 7th century AD, the 7th century Abbess of Iona, which is in northeastern Scotland. So I've got... Um, a very strongly Celtic uh, uh, influence there back in ancestry. And also, as you're probably all aware, there was a lot of, shall we say, <clears throat> Viking interaction in Northeast. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, lots of, you know, pillaging and stuff. Um, so my family, having been uh, joined by the Vikings, um, we've got this this very sort of uh, this this Scandinavian and Celtic lineage coming down. I am a uh, a deist. I I worship deities. I worship the old gods, the old uh, Celtic Britannic gods, and I worship in particular. I hearken back to. Uh, Scandinavian and Scots Celtic roots. So, um, to put it succinctly, if I may, Please. Odin loves me. Uh, okay. So, and it's simply oh, as I can. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's that's where I come from. That's who I talk to, um, and that's who brings me my spiritual strength. I guess you can call me a pagan. Oh, yeah, no. I call you much worse Are than that. Um, <laughs> yes, I've heard, but we won't go into that now. Oh, no, one of my best friends is an Odin Odinist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very there. good to see her. And even though she is an Odinist and cannot practice anything else, yeah. when she had a fever dream a couple of months ago, Durga on a tiger appeared in her living room. And she called me up at 4.30 in the morning to say that there was a lady on a tiger who wanted to talk to me. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Um, very often our messages are brought to us in that fashion. Um, although the messages, I would have to say, from talking to a lot of other people in a, a lot of other faiths, I would have to say that the messages are generally pretty darn clear. We know if Odin is unhappy with us, so to speak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. yeah. In the time so, of climate change, actually, wait, does, does Odin, does Odin, do you feel anger in a time of climate change? When, when, when you're watching, you know, uh, do, things like that, when you're watching the environment be, uh, it, is that something that he has called on? Like, like the Druids, uh, I know, are very big with environment. So, how is how is Odin? Is he pissed right now? <laughs> um, in general, he is a little disappointed. I'd say he's not really peeved. Um, you'd certainly know it if he was. Um, it's you know the the gods move. And you, I'm sure you've heard this cliche before, but the gods move in mysterious ways. Um, is Odin unhappy with me because he's d 
delivered me this summer in north central Illinois that is killing me slowly, inch by inch. Um, yeah, he may be. Um, personally, I would uh, I would blame Thor and Tyrannus before I would. I was blame going to say. I was going uh, to say. Yeah, exactly. I mean the 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 gods move independently, and it's it's very much like a family thing. I mean, Dad only gets involved if somebody really messes up. Mm. <coughs> Can you call the wild hunt? Yeah, I can. It's been a long, long time since I've done it, but uh, my uh, one of my uh, primary uh, um, uh, spiritual advisors, if you like, is Sir Nunos, um, who is the Celtic Lord of the hunt, the wild hunt, and mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's something that I can do if needed, something that I won't do unless it's necessary. It's like mm. a lot of other things. Rituals, ritual practices are required when a certain and specific end is needed to happen, not just to be played with like a Ouija board or... <laughs> You know, I mean, <laughs> sorry anybody who's into the Ouija boards and anything like that, but, uh, you know, um, messing about with those sorts of things can be very hazardous. Oh, yeah, we know. Uh -huh. Yeah, you could always get shot with an arrow and, on a hunt. So uh, look what happened to David Niven. Uh, well. <laughs> in, in Eye of the Needle, not really David Niven, it was an Eye of the Needle. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, in reality, I don't know what would happen if I tried to call the absolute maximum power. I'm, as much as I am vampire, that is only a part of what I am. I am an energy worker. I work with natural energies. I work with environmental energies. I work with... Uh, gemstones. I work with all sorts of things like this. Um, all parts of the physical world. The fact that I happen to be a vampire is just a small part of what I do. And I'm yeah, keep talking. They'll give you a show on SOC. <laughs> ah, well, um, I'm sure they'd love that. I, yeah, I think that they. I'm just making sure that Tracy hears that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, were you officially and formally initiated into the five elements, or did you just have command of them because you were a vampire? Um, just command of them. I haven't been formally initiated, apart from my original, shall we say, initiation into sanguinarianism so long mm -hmm. ago. We're talking... 70, 79-ish, um, so yeah, it's been a while, um, 78, 79, um, I haven't been formally initiated, my learning has been on my own, uh, under my own steam, mm. I am a self-taught, I am a self-studied, um, mm. I study and study and study. Yes, I've come into contact with a lot of very amazing people, uh, a lot of astounding people, um, uh, psychic people uh, in Australia. Um, in fact, I, I, even, I had a professional psychic tell me one day that I was, I had been born 300 years late. Go figure. I, you know, I mean, so, you have a lot of catching up to do. There are yeah. some people that believe that a vampire is the only thing that can take on a demon in this dimension. What do you think about that, you guys? Mm. Oh, there's the Crips and the Bloods. I think that they could give up, put up a pretty good fight. Um, yeah, there is that. Uh, perhaps we get the 
cast of uh, Twilight to uh, no, sorry, um, let's not go there. Um, I think that there is a presence of an angelic nature that is abound in the world, but not the way that you would conceive of a Christian angel, heaven, choir, that sort of thing. It's the balance. Mm. Okay. Oh, interesting. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how Sahaja now works into this. My lady wife and I were invited to uh, join Temple House Sahaja. Um, the exact reasons we were invited to join, I'm not entirely clear on. I can only assume that we impressed the right people um, and that with RVL, with the work at RVL, we had been doing something uh, vital, necessary and needed. Uh, and that was what brought us uh, into this into this incredible circle, this amazing family. The Temple House to Jaza has just been an eye opener for me. Um, and I'm I'm still working through I'm uh, a Naja, which is a student. Um, so I'm still working through my first year. There's a lot of a way to go. Uh, I haven't done my official uh, uh, initiation right yet. Um, but uh, the more I work within the framework, uh, it's, uh, it's just something that I felt immediately that has been missing for many, many, many years. And uh, the gods bless Goddess Rosemary for finding me. <laughs> I love Goddess Rosemary. She's awesome. Yes. Unbelievable. She's amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Um, quick question. Do you guys use blood in your rituals? Um, I I'd, have to, I'd have to say I don't know because I haven't been involved in a full Sasha as a ritual yet. Um, and even if I did know, I don't know whether I'd be able to talk to you about it without having to kill myself afterwards for revealing <laughs> yeah, Or we might brand you. That's always happening. That's what happened in the Gio, early. Gio, can you comment you. on that without Iron. getting in trouble? Uh, well, as, as the spiritual daughter of Goddess Rosemary, um, I can tell you that the rituals that we practice are very personal they are very private we do not do them publicly nor do we discuss them publicly outside of a certain context i can tell you though personally in my own personal rituals yes i do use blood in many of my rituals but i cannot I speak to, oh. of sahaja in that regard nor would i is it is it an offering or is it an element that you need what is it it depends on the ritual in particular. Um, the, when it comes to blood, uh, when I'm making offerings to Great Mother, Tiamat, um, I do give blood as an offering. Uh, when it comes to, uh, I'm, I'm also a main ad of Dionysus. So when I'm doing my rituals to him, we usually use blood or semen most, most specifically. Right, I was uh, gonna bring that up. The, uh, the blood is, a carrier for energy, for thought, for manifestation, but it is also an element unto itself. Um, there's a specific ritual that I do for uh, youth and beauty that involves using blood. Um, there are sexual rites that we do. Uh, again, this is not Sahaja ritual that I'm that I'm referring to. Uh, my own personal rituals. Uh, yes, I do use blood for many of my rituals. Uh, you find that you have to use your own blood more often? Uh, it depends on what I want to do. If I want something that is extremely powerful, I will use my own blood. If I want something that is uh, an offering or uh, something a little less serious, then I will use someone else's blood, given willingly, of course. Uh, or, um, yes? Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to just uh, interject something here the, the, um, for the listeners that don't really know. There's a lot of bodily fluids that carry the same genetic disposition as blood. And mm -hmm. uh, there's also a lot of things that can be used in ritual. You don't need, to, it doesn't have to be blood. It could also be urine. It could also be semen. It could also be hair. It could be, it, there's a lot of, there's many things. There's skin. Um, um, there's many things that can go into any of these things. It doesn't have to be that. And, it can, and they could also be symbolic. And it could also be, well, symbolic pretty much covers it. I'll just stop there before someone slaps me for saying it too much. There you go. Well, as a as a witch, I can tell you that the unique quality that blood has is it contains iron, and it can be magnetized. Blood is liquid iron. The thing is, it depends on the iron content in each individual person, but as we also know, iron is used um, to ward, so it can also be protective in that way, but it's you know, there's not a lot of iron in semen. I know that. Hmm. So the semen specifically, I, I use for Dionysus because, um, oh, of course, in, when you're worshiping uh, Dionysus in, in his many aspects. When you're worshiping Dionysus as Inorches, uh, the god hmm. who comes, which is probably the one that people are most familiar with, uh, thanks and curses to True Blood for doing that. Uh, Inortes is one of the many aspects of Dionysus. If you, if any of you have seen pictures of me on my left arm, there are seven tattoos written in ancient Greek. Uh, those are the seven names of Dionysus that I work with. Uh, Eleutherios, Inortes, Dendritas, Promios, Bacchus, and Eleutherios. Most specifically, I work with Eleutherios in the Eleusian Mysteries. And we use semen for him because it is life creation as opposed to life existent. We're heading How into familiar our commercial. are you with Hecate? Hmm. I'm quite familiar with Hecate, actually. She was one of the first goddesses I worked with when I was initiated into the Fellowship of Isis. Okay, so we're going to go to commercial, as Tony was saying. Before well, I so well, we, rudely interrupted, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I just wanted, I, I, before we go, we, we need to, people want to know where they can find you. Uh, Lady Gia, tell us where you can be found online um, and in general. Where, are you, where okay. are you at? Where are you playing next? Uh, the next thing I will be doing will be, uh, I, I will be attending the Sahaja rituals and the Sahaja dinner and all of the Sahaja events in at the end of September in New Orleans. I will also be, of course, uh, co-producing with Maven Logan. Uh, in the uh, October events for our Old World event in New Orleans. Uh, and I will be doing uh, the Winter's Waltz Ball in December in Louisville with the Louisville Vampire Court. But you can find me online at giabathory.com. You can also find me on Facebook under Gia Alia Bathory. Uh, my, my last name is actually Von Eschet, but uh, Facebook will not let me change it uh, because of certain reasons, but they, they won't let me change it to Bathory Von Ash, which is actually my name. But you can find me just about anywhere. Just Google Gia Bathory. I am the only one. Okay. And Tim, tell us about, tell us where we can find Real Vampire News and where else you can be found. Uh, well, you can find realvampirenews.com, which is a WordPress uh, for the e-zine. And uh, we also have a Facebook page, uh, again, uh, Real Vampire News. And, uh, oh, sorry, Real Vampire Life on Facebook, which is our, um, yeah, our lifestyle magazine. Um, so in both of those places. Um, and uh, if, you, uh, if you want to get in touch with us, we have uh, an email office address Giltine, G-I-L-T-I-N-E, 51 at gmail.com. Okay. And we will be back. To, oh, anything else? No. That's I was just okay. going to say. There is our station promo. <laughs> yeah. And that is, we're going to be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Uh, Tracy, take us out of here. We'll see everybody else in a little bit. We are we are magically at the. Marie and Tony will be right back as we take a break for messages from our sponsors. Sock Radio aims to provide a wide range of hosts, shows, views, and opinions while endeavouring to maintain our three vital principles of openness, honesty, and integrity. Covering all aspects of spiritualism, mediumship, healing, personal and spiritual development for all faiths, religions and walks of life as a way of life. As part of our SpiritualistOnline.com, Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum, Sock Radio brings you the latest and honest news, views and names in the spiritual field. Check us out and tune in to Sock Radio on SpiritualistOnline.com. Join in at the Sock Radio chat room on the website. Spirit Weavers with Jody White Wolf Morrison. A weekly one hour radio show, Thursdays, 8 pm UK time, featuring those who are dedicated to living their spirituality and exploring how that is woven into their everyday lives through their work, practices, and beliefs. Various Sock members from Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum sharing their abilities, knowledge, and more. Dates and times will vary. Live in the Sock Radio chat room on spiritualistonline.com or simply listen in at tunein.com and search for Sock Radio. Premium membership on spiritualistonline.com Join our Teaching Lyceum for classes and courses for certificate and diploma levels. It's an option, not an obligation. Still only £30 per year for unlimited seminars, guest sessions, members' moments, voice members included on radio chats and TV shows, full certificate courses and qualifications, members' promotions of sites, books and services, discounts on SOC services, one-on-one teaching, private classes, members-only Facebook. Upgrade your membership today. Joint family group options. See spiritualistonline.com. Astrology Chat with Chrissy Lincoln, Psychological Body and Spirit. Monthly chat show, last Tuesday of the month, 1 to 3 p.m. New Zealand time. Advertise with Sock Radio, 10, 15, 20 or 30 second jingles, adverts or promotions. All going out live on Sock Radio. Promote your services, churches, groups or events at the best rates online. Work with us on shows or promotion and you can get your jingles absolutely free. For this and more, contact Julie at SockRadioShows at gmail.com. Sock Radio aims to provide a wide range of hosts, shows, views and opinions while endeavouring to maintain our three vital principles of openness, honesty and integrity. Covering all aspects of spiritualism, mediumship, healing, personal and spiritual development for all faiths, religions and walks of life as a way of life. As part of our SpiritualistOnline.com, Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum, Sock Radio brings you the latest and honest news, views and names in the spiritual field. Check us out and tune in to Sock Radio on SpiritualistOnline.com. Join in at the Sock Radio chat room on the website. The Circle of Mediums Radio Show. Six mediums, healers, psychics, tarot, astrologers, spiritual workers every week. Sharing spirit messages, development techniques, guidance and much more. Live in the Sock Radio chat room on spiritualistonline.com or simply listen in at tunein.com. Search Sock Radio. Would you like to contribute readings, thoughts, teachings, and time to this two-hour show? Get in touch at sockradioshows at gmail.com. Spirit Weavers with Jody White Wolf Morrison. A weekly one-hour radio show. Thursdays, 8 p.m. UK time. Featuring those who are dedicated to living their spirituality and exploring how that is woven into their everyday lives through their work, practices and beliefs. Various SOC members from Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum sharing their abilities, knowledge and more. 
Dates and times will vary. Live in the Sock Radio chat room on spiritualistonline.com or simply listen in at tunein.com and search for Sock Radio. Advertise with Sock Radio. 10, 15, 20 or 30 second jingles, adverts or promotions. All going out live on Sock Radio. Promote your services, churches, groups or events at the best rates online. Work with us on shows or promotion and you can get your jingles absolutely free. For this and more, contact Julie at SockRadioShows at gmail.com membership on spiritualistonline.com. Join our teaching lyceum, classes and courses, to certificate and diploma levels. It's an option, not an obligation. Still only £30 per year for unlimited seminars, guest sessions, members moments, voice members included on radio chats and TV shows, full certificate courses and qualifications, members promotions of sites, books and services. Discounts on SOC services, one-on-one -on -one teaching, private classes, members-only Facebook. Upgrade your membership today. Joint family group options. See spiritualistonline.com. Spiritualist Open Circle Forum Panel Show. The liveliest spiritual chat show online. The Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum Chat Show with hosts, guest speakers and panellists discussing and challenging all areas of spiritual thought, ability, knowledge and more. Ever wanted to voice your thoughts and help set standards within the field? Confront those who bring the work down or simply share your ideas and help bring spirit's work into the light of day and give spiritualism the recognition of all as a true faith and way of life. Then this is the show for you. Every last Friday of the month, 10 p.m. UK time. Join the team. Premium membership on spiritualistonline.com. Join our teaching lyceum, classes and courses to certificate and diploma levels. It's an option, not an obligation. Still only £30 per year for unlimited seminars, guest sessions, members' moments, voice members included on radio chats and TV shows. Full certificate courses and qualifications. Members promotions of sites, books and services. Discounts on SOC services. One-on-one -on -one teaching. Private classes. Members only Facebook. Upgrade your membership today. Joint family group options. See spiritualistonline.com Sock Radio aims to provide a wide range of hosts, shows, views and opinions while endeavouring to maintain our three vital principles of openness, honesty and integrity. Covering all aspects of spiritualism, mediumship, healing, personal and spiritual development for all faiths, religions and walks of life as a way of life. As part of our spiritualistonline.com, Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum, Sock Radio brings you the latest and honest news, views and names in the spiritual field. Check us out and tune in to Sock Radio on spiritualistonline.com. Join in the Sock Radio chat room on the website. Join us on Sock Radio. Host your own online radio show. We welcome inquiries and ideas for your own show live right here on Sock Radio. Share your knowledge, thoughts and abilities. Bring your ideas to life here with us on Sock Radio at spiritualistonline.com or join any of our shows as a special guest, speaker or presenter. Check out the liveliest spiritual chat show, the Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum, a monthly discussion show, or the Circle of Mediums, a weekly show sharing spirit messages and teaching all aspects of mediumship and psychic abilities. Or join our Christina on the monthly astrology show. Contact us now at SockRadioShows at gmail.com or facebook.com forward slash Sock Radio. Spiritualist Open Circle Forum Panel Show. The liveliest spiritual chat show online. The Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum Chat Show with hosts, guest speakers and panellists discussing and challenging all areas of spiritual thought, ability, knowledge and more. 
Ever wanted to voice your thoughts and help set standards within the field? Confront those who bring the work down or simply share your ideas and help bring spirit's work into the light of day and give spiritualism the recognition of all as a true faith and way of life. Then this is the show for you. Every last Friday of the month, 10pm UK time. Join the team. Advertise with Sock Radio. 10, 15, 20 or 30 second jingles, adverts or promotions. All going out live on Sock Radio. Promote your services, churches, groups or events at the best rates online. Work with us on shows or promotion and you could get your jingles absolutely free. For this and more, contact Julie at SockRadioShows at gmail.com. Sock Radio aims to provide a wide range of hosts, shows, views and opinions while endeavouring to maintain our three vital principles of openness, honesty and integrity. Covering all aspects of spiritualism, mediumship, healing, personal and spiritual development for all faiths, religions and walks of life as a way of life. As part of our SpiritualistOnline.com, Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum, Sock Radio brings you the latest and honest news, views and names in the spiritual field. Check us out and tune in to Sock Radio on SpiritualistOnline.com. Join in the Sock Radio chat room on the website. Join us on Sock Radio. Host your own online radio show. We welcome inquiries and ideas for your own show live right here on Sock Radio. Share your knowledge, thoughts and abilities. Bring your ideas to life here with us on Sock Radio at spiritualistonline.com or join any of our shows as a special guest, speaker or presenter. Check out the liveliest spiritual chat show, the Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum, a monthly discussion show, or the Circle of Mediums, a weekly show sharing spirit messages and teaching all aspects of mediumship and psychic abilities. Or join our Christina on the monthly astrology show. Contact us now at SockRadioShows at gmail.com or facebook.com forward slash SockRadio. Astrology Chat with Chrissy Lincoln, Psychological Body and Spirit. Monthly chat show, last Tuesday of the month, 1 to 3 p.m. New Zealand time. Sock Radio aims to provide a wide range of hosts, shows, views and opinions while endeavouring to maintain our three vital principles of openness, honesty and integrity. Covering all aspects of spiritualism, mediumship, healing, personal and spiritual development for all faiths, religions and walks of life as a way of life. As part of our SpiritualistOnline.com, Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum, Sock Radio brings you the latest and honest news, views and names in the spiritual field. Check us out and tune in to Sock Radio on SpiritualistOnline.com. Join in the Sock Radio chat room on the website. Membership on spiritualistonline.com. Join our teaching lyceum for classes and courses to certificate and diploma levels. It's an option, not an obligation. Still only £30 per year for unlimited seminars, guest sessions, members' moments, voice members included on radio chats and TV shows, full certificate courses and qualifications, members' promotions of sites, books, and services. Discounts on SOC services, one-on-one -on -one teaching, private classes, members-only Facebook. Upgrade your membership today. Joint family group options. See spiritualistonline.com. Advertise with SOC Radio. 10, 15, 20 or 30 second jingles, adverts or promotions. All going out live on SOC Radio. Promote your services, churches, groups or events at the best rates online. Work with us on shows or promotion and you can get your jingles absolutely free. For this and more, contact Julie at SockRadioShows at gmail.com. Welcome back to the lab as Marie and Tony teach you all about magic. Go. 
Oh, the tinctures and all the tonics, and all I need was the blood of a young boy. Yes, good <laughs> evening, and thank you for... <laughs> Welcome back to Magic Lab Academy, where we're talking to... Oh, let's go out to the lobby. Anyway, uh, this is Tony. We're at Magic Lab Academy. I'm here with Hollywood, Hollywood witch Marie Vargas, and we're talking with Gia Bathory and Tim Bay, trying to get Tracy, our producer, to giggle. Um, we were talking on the break of a few things. Uh, Marie, why don't you take some of this? Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, um, we were talking about certain workings and certain rituals. Um, you had a specific thing that you had wanted to bring up, and I figured I'd let you introduce it. Because it was you okay, right um, well, I wanted to talk about the eclipse that's happening on Monday. It is called Black Monday because it is a new moon, which is a black moon, which will be covered by the sun or the black sun. Actually, the moon is covering the sun. Oops. So the black moon is covering the sun, making it black as well. And uh, I have a question for Gia. I was wondering if there is anything special that you are doing for this auspicious occasion. There absolutely is. Um, there, I, I can almost guarantee there will be a Sahaja ritual. We usually do a, a dark moon ritual. So I'm sure this will be no different, probably much more intense. But uh, we, at the Temple of Great Mother, we will also be doing a, a ritual called the opening of the eye, which is uh, when this particular conjunction happens, uh, it allows us to gaze into the abyss where our god Absu lies dead but dreaming. And it gives us a chance to go in and explore inside the abyss without the normal precautions that need to be taken. Now, is Abzu similar or another aspect of Brahma, who is constantly dreaming? That's actually a very good comparison uh, to make, but no, he, he isn't. Um, Abzu is the consort of Great Mother, Tiamat. Uh, Abzu is the god that was slain, that caused the original war between the gods. So would he be akin to Osiris? He's very similar to Osiris. Uh, he is the god of order. He is the order aspect of Great Mother. Between the two of them, you have the chaotic waters that are salt seas and the fresh waters that are calm. So when you mix them together, you have the balance of everything that is creation. And when you can gaze in to speak to Absu, you gain the knowledge of the abyss and you can bring some of him back with you when you come back. And what does bringing some of him back with you do? Well, that depends on the person doing it. Uh, but for me personally, uh, it means that it, it's a bit like it's a bit like injecting the blood of an ancient relative into your veins. It brings a closer relationship with the gods. It makes you a little bit more of the divine. It makes you. Uh, a little less human, and in my case, much more reptilian. Okay. Tony, you had some questions? Actually, I had something completely different that, than I was going to ask before. Uh, we keep coming back to the reptilian, and I want to know, are, do you have specific specific gifts to you because, you, um, because of that, because, you, uh, because you're reptilian? Is there um, do you have a like the vampires have a glamour? What 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 can you do that I can't do? Uh, well, I'm, I I wouldn't assume what you can and cannot do personally. I, I would be so I'm an example. <laughs> uh, but as as far as me personally, um, the gifts that I have be, because of that and because of marrying the knight personally and 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 being vampiric. There is, is kind of an interesting uh, mixture of the two. The glamour that, that, I, that I have naturally as a vampire, uh, especially as a Toreador vampirist, uh, the glamour that I have tends to be a lot stronger. It tends to go a lot deeper and it tends to be a lot more hypnotic. But also on the darker side, on the reptilian side of that, it can allow you to get inside someone's head. It can allow you to terrify them. It can allow you to control them. 
And it can also, if need be, allow you to destroy them and rip them apart from the inside out. Tell me about, I am a horror writer. I am not terrified of anything. <laughs> I wish I was be because I am, because I, my life is coming up with things that will terrify other people. So I can't terrify myself. So how do you terrify? What, what is it? What, what, what do you draw on and what do you impose on someone and how do you impose it uh, in, a, in a telepathic sense? I embody Tiamat, uh, the goddess of chaos. I bring that aspect of myself out. Um, I've had uh, certain partners of mine describe it as the snack eyes, where they say that I'm looking at them like a snack. And then oh. it, it goes much deeper into their heads. Uh, it can, with, with someone who is, you know, as you say, not terrified of anything, everyone is terrified oh. of something, even yes, if it's yes, their own. I or their own loss of inspiration or the loss of their talents or whatever it is. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a stirring of their soul and a ripping inside of it, which will terrify any living being. Okay. And you tap into that. How do you, how do you bring that out in someone? Do you, are you tapping into something that exists or are you imposing something new on them? I'm imposing something upon them but you can oftentimes easily draw upon whatever it is that is inside of them. Most people don't, they don't shield themselves from things. And, I, and I'm sure, you know, Miss, Miss Vargas can tell you about this. People don't adequately shield themselves. They don't know how most of the time. And because of that, you can use that to your advantage and they're an open book. You just look into their eyes and you go deep inside and there's, just a plethora of information available and you pick whichever works best and you magnify it and you thrust it into their brain and you start ripping as you come out. <laughs> oh, well, that's new. Uh, quick question. Are you using the so-called reptilian part of your brain when you do this? Absolutely. And that's where it lies. That's where the power lies. It's more like an electrical plug-in. You need both the wall socket and the plug itself to make contact. You need the reptilian soul as well as the reptilian brain aspect in order to connect that hive mind into drawing onto that power. So yes and no. Yes and no. Okay. Do you bring this into performance? Absolutely. Uh, Tell me about doing this to an entire audience. There is nothing that can describe the feeling. Um, it is seductive. It's terrifying. It is emotionally stirring. Uh, depending on what kind of performance I'm doing, it can make people cry. It can make them feel whatever it is I choose to make them feel. And if I can connect to them on that emotional level, I'm feeding the entire time. As I'm putting it into them, I'm pulling that essence out of them and feeding from it. Uh, as as Miss Vargas said on our on our last radio uh, our last radio show that we did, she made a comment about uh, how there is nothing like feeding from an audience when you're performing, and she's absolutely right. Uh, you can magnify that, you can amplify that. The movements, the the facial expressions, the emotion that you portray outward to your audience is what can make or break what you're doing. It can also intensify it as well. Okay. Um, Marie, do you have any yes. anything to add? Because you also are very interested in the performance arts. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> All right. Actually, I want to get back to Tim. We'll get back to you in a second. Tim, tell us a little bit about about um, what are you doing for what are you doing for the Black Moon, and what sort of rituals do you see coming up um, in your immediate circle? Well, the immediate ritual would be, as Lady Gia indicated, the uh, Temple House of Sajaza ritual. Um, personally, I. Again, only perform rituals as I need to. I will, by preference, perform them on a new moon or a 
full moon. Um, and I, I really do, I have been, for as long as I can remember, far more comfortable with the song. So whether that says something about me or not, I don't know. Okay. Um, and also during the break, we were talking about the Babylon working. Um, and <clears throat> Lady Gia said that there's certain things that she is able to talk about. Um, she's a member of the OTO. She's a member of a very specific order of the OTO. Uh, she is the geek of the OTO. Go ahead, admit it, talk about it. Um, so Gia, tell us about the geek order of the hermetic. Uh, tell us tell us about what, where you are and what we're talking about here. Uh, we are the Order Hermetica. Uh, we are, as you said, the geeks of the OTO. Uh, we spend most of our time that is ritual oriented, either practicing and performing rituals or studying and translating texts, uh, doing various workings that involve the, the more literary aspects of the OTO. Uh, we are the record keepers, we are the translators, uh, but we are also the hardcore ritualists. Um, we don't we don't engage in in what Crowley called the milk toast magic of the OTO. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, hmm? so these go back to um, so your the this particular order goes back a lot further than uh, what most people are practicing now. There was a break in the between the Golden Dawn. There was a break in the organization of the OTO. Uh, you are closer to the original. Um, the original uh, mission statement, I would say. Correct. Okay. Um, do you, is there a direct link between uh, the people of that of the original lodges and you? Uh, with me personally, um, no. With the group I that am, you're with. with the group that you're oh, with. with that I'm with. Yes, uh, Crowley did the work with us. Uh, he was he was one of one of the main members that we had uh, when he split off from Mathers and decided that he was going to do his own thing uh, during the time of his Corazon. Uh, that was when that was when the Order Hermetica was mostly founded, uh, though it was fleshed out more over the years as it went uh, long after his death. Okay. And we were also going to talk about the Babylon working. Um, this is a, this is a, this also comes from Crowley. Uh, it was done famously by Crowley um, with Jack, I'm sorry, what's his name? Parsons. Jack, Jack Parsons, thank you very much. It was on, I just read an article on it and I just brain, my brain went dead. <laughs> and L. Ron Hubbard, who started Scientology. Um, mm -hmm. You also performed this ritual. Yes, reports I of that, Reports of that ritual is they brought something, they opened a door and let something in. So when you did yours, did you open a door? Did anything come in? Uh, when I did the Babylon marking, uh, I, I did give birth to something. Yes. Um, I am, I'm not going to say what, obviously. Uh, but yes, our Babylon working was quite successful. I, I am the mother to many dragons as we, as we can euphemistically say. <laughs> oh, cool. I can get you screeners to, uh, no, can, nobody gets screeners to Game of Thrones, but if you're the mother of dragons, maybe you can. Um, I, I I do like to consider myself the mother of dragons in that aspect, yes. <laughs> okay. So tell us, what uh, the working is very, 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 very specific. Um, even when I was doing the research, I just trying to find little things to put in about it was difficult to find how to explain it. Um, tell us about the, some of the preparation that you have to do and tell us about what can go wrong if something is done incorrectly in the Babylon working. Yes, uh, it is, it is um, painstakingly, exhaustingly specific. Um, that is why it's usually only practiced by the most experienced of our orders. Um, people, it, it is one of those rituals that even our experienced practitioners usually will shy away from because of the danger involved. If you mispronounce names, if you mispronounce words, if you if your timing is off, if your alignments with things are off, it can go 
drastically apocalyptically wrong, uh, which is what a lot of people accuse uh, Parsons of having done was uh, because it's not really common knowledge, but he, the first Babylon working he did was successful, but he did several afterward as well. Uh, one of which was unsuccessful because it was interrupted. And that is what is blamed for a lot of the chaos that is going on currently in the world is the, what he birthed into the world that was not what he was originally planning on summoning and manifesting. Um, the ritual itself requires weeks of fasting and meditation and uh, various other side rituals that need to be done. Uh, anyone who's familiar with uh, with the Thelema or the uh, especially the works that he did uh, during the Abbey of, uh, during his time at the uh, Abbey of Thelema in Chefalu uh, will recognize a lot of that. It's it's very 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 draining. It's something that takes many many weeks to prepare for, and if you are not, it's not that you're doing these rituals or these these fastings in order to sacrifice anything or conjure anything it's that you have to be prepared physically as well as spiritually for what you are going to do because as the host for the Babylon ritual um, as the Scarlet Bride during that chemical wedding you have to have an absolutely unshakable constitution because you are literally letting a dead being a, a dead God inside of you and you are transmuting it into a living form ethereally and then birthing it. And that can completely destroy you both physically and mentally if you don't do it correctly. Uh, there are cases of people going crazy afterwards, actually, I've, I've read. Uh, the, the persons uh, during, their, during their workings, the, uh, the woman there, Marie, you know her name? What Cameron. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry? Hello, it was Cameron. Yeah. Yes, uh, and uh, she had problems afterwards. Uh, Tim, let me ask you something. Um, the Sahaja rituals, uh, have, you re have you read them? I, I, I know that you haven't been initiated yet, but have you read any of the, any of the things that, um, that were written to be done, to be performed? Sahaja. No, we, have, uh, we haven't, uh, neither my wife or I have uh, read any of those rituals as yet. I believe that is something that comes along when we are uh, formally initiated. At the moment, we are still studying. Okay. Uh, okay. Aren't you going to ask me about my rituals? I actually, I will. Marie, yeah. tell us, give us a little bit of, of vampiric Hollywood witch insight into how you mix and merge. Oh, okay. Well, for the Black Sun, Black Moon Day, I am worshipping Rahu, the north node of the moon, who is traditionally the head of the dragon. Uh, Ketu, the bottom half, is the south node of the moon. Rahu brings great disaster or great fortune. So, during the eclipse, he can be appeased with eight black foods. Fra Rahu is regularly worshipped in Thailand, specifically during the eclipses, to bring luck. It's very large temples. Um, and a medallion I gave you yes. is Rahu in his magnificent Thai form, Fra Rahu. I wear it out. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what are you doing? Uh, do you, can you tell us what, we, what you're doing this for? What is your... What is the intent of, of the ritual? What is the purpose on Monday? Uh, Rahu brings me success, fortune, and he likes to chomp on the souls of my enemies. So I think I'm going to offer him a hater buffet before he leaves <laughs> and see how many of them he can eat for me. He's really nice that way. I have a really weird question on sympathetic magic in a different sense. If someone is sympathetic mm. to your magic while you are performing it, mm. can they ride the wave of your magic even if they themselves are not involved in your magic? 
Uh oh, it's like a contact high, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I suppose so. It depends. If a person is particularly empathic, of course. If they know how to shield themselves, no. And if they're in between, 50-50. It's a crapshoot. Gee, yeah, same question. Can people ride your magic like a broom? Uh, it depends on the person. Um, as, as she said, uh, it depends on the empathy of the person. If they are someone that is that is sensitive to those things, absolutely. They can, they can ride it into oblivion if they choose to do so. Okay, I, you know, it really depends on the nature of the magic. I mm -hmm. think that some magic for the uninitiated or the unprepared can make them mad. I mean, not mad as an angry, but crazy. I've seen that happen several times, too. I can get them mad, too. He's a little pissed off. No, I'm talking stark raving I rubber know. room kind of mad, yeah? Okay. Uh, and... Do you write other people's magic? Do you can you can you find it out there? Can you find it in the ether and can you ride waves of it? Whether you know the person who's performing it or not. For example, Monday is going to be a very busy day because of where the moons are. Can if someone is practicing alone, can they tap into the mass consciousness of magic that's going on that particular day? Oh, absolutely. That's the same thing we have happen on Halloween or on Beltane or any of the other high holy days, Sabbaths. Would you agree, Gia? I would absolutely agree. Uh, in fact, a lot of the communication that I do uh, with our mother, Goddess Rosemary, specifically is energy-based. Uh, it's a connection that happens. It's when when she's reaching out, you can feel it. Uh, any. As, as all of us are, are connected with her in some way, shape, or form, I'm, I'm sure you can all attest to the same thing. It's just about whether or not you can pick up on it. Mm -hmm. I've ridden her waves. <laughs> They're fun, I, I have to say. Um, she, she used to throw the most magnificent parties with rituals. Um, okay, so... Let me see. So, oh, what's going to be? So, tell us a little bit about what's going to be happening in New Orleans when uh, when the Sahaja gets together. Uh, the Sahaja get together is um, it, it's a very private affair. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to be my first year uh, at attending all of the events, um, so I'm I'm very excited. Uh, there's a dinner party. There's meetings. There's rituals. There's all sorts of things going on. It's, it's going to be a wonderful family get together for all of us that I'm very much so looking forward to as I will be meeting some of some of my Sahaja family for the first time. Oh, good for you. Uh, and Tim, are you going to this? Um, hoping to, but it is a little touch and go at the moment. Um, <clears throat> how can I put it? I am currently between vocational assignments. Oh, I guess so. You. Yes, it's going to depend. If I can find myself some gainful employment, then there's a pretty good chance we'll be there. If I can't, well, somebody's going to have to go for me. I nominate <laughs> Lady Gia. <laughs> I would. I really hope that you can make it. You and I need to sit down in a library with a bottle of absinthe and we. <laughs> We need to do some talking, you and I. Uh, we, I absolutely hope that you can make it. I would love to meet you in person, finally. Oh, you had me at absinthe, girl. Yeah, right, <laughs> me too. I yeah. Ran, I actually ran a, a, an absinthe bar in New Orleans called the Green Ferry. That uh, oh. we, we ended up becoming one of the best absinthe bars in America. We had the lar one of the largest selections of absinthe, and all we served was absinthe, and it was a legendary haven that we have a lot of wonderful memories from. I wish you could have gone if you were an absent fan. It, it was wonderful. We're about to close off. So before I do, I want, uh, Gia, I want you to talk about the community that you're forming um, and what you're doing uh, to get this together. You're constructing an off-grid society. And so tell us a little bit about that. 
I am so glad that you asked me about that. No one ever asks me about that. I bet um, I should it for the end so that everyone will remember. Uh, I am currently, uh, I've done 12 years of research um, to, to tailor everything from the way that my buildings are constructed at the temple to the, to the insects and animals that we have in the ecosystem there. Um, the, the overall view of it is I am creating, uh, in Hungary, we call them a harad which is a, uh, it's a castle. I'm actually building a, a reconstruction of a 16th century Hungarian castle and, in downtown Memphis and uh, much to the dismay of the codes department. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, it's, it's a place where spiritualists, uh, vampires, pagans, all of us can come together and live and break themselves free of the cycle of debt um, because people are sick of living paycheck to paycheck and giving 90% of what they make to some stranger who is going to kick them out the next month if they don't pay it. And this, I offer people a way that they can not only break free of that, but also build, they can pay for the materials to build a, a home of their own in our temple area, according to the designs that we have, obviously that mm -hmm. will allow them to over the course of a year or two pay that off and own that particular piece of property themselves outright. Um, that's the most important aspect of it. We also have an organic food garden that one of my friends helped to design that allows for 24 hour solar growing. Um, it also allows organic food to be dispersed throughout our community inside of there as we have a five-star chef who specializes in those sorts of foods. Uh, they're very old world ancient recipes. A lot of them come from ancient Rome um, and the food is delivered every day. It's part of the food program. You pay a small amount of money every month, uh, far less than you would pay to buy groceries for your house for a week. And then that provides you with three delivered meals a day for each person in your house. And it, more or less, we take away all of the stresses and anxieties and financial burdens of people as a whole so that they can focus on their own spiritual growth, enlightenment, and evolution. Because at, at the end of the day, what we, what we value most is the evolution of the self into the perfection of the self. Not what someone else thinks your perfection is, but the perfection of what the gods created you to be. Thank you. We're actually closing off now, but I'd like to, before we go, uh, Marie relaunched her Hollywood Witch um, website and her own site today, and I'd like her to tell you where you can find her. Yes, you can follow me on Facebook. Um, just type in at... A Hollywood Witch, and that will take you to my Hollywood Witch page. And you can also find me on The Hollywood Witch on WordPress. Okay, and we are Magic Lab Academy, and we are brought to you here by SOC Radio, which is brought to you by the Spiritualist Online Network. And we will see you, well, everyone but me, we'll see you next week when Marie brings on, who you bring on next week? Vanessa Hudgens Vanessa and Hoggle. Oh. Vanessa Hoggle. And Julia Sikusa, who are team members of the Horsefly Chronicles investigation team and Threefold Paranormal. They're investigating Cropsy. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us at Magic Lab. See you next time for more Conjurings. Soccer Radio aims to provide a wide range of hosts, shows, views and opinions while endeavouring to maintain our three vital principles of openness, honesty and integrity. Covering all aspects of spiritualism, mediumship, healing, personal and spiritual development for all faiths, religions and walks of life as a way of life. As part of our SpiritualistOnline.com, Spiritualist Online Network and Lyceum, Soccer Radio brings you the latest and honest news, views and names in the spiritual field. Check us out and tune in to Sock Radio on spiritualistonline.com. Join in the Sock Radio chat room on the website.